Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will see what is a UML class diagram. Here is our outline. We will see first of all what is UML and after that we will talk about UML class diagrams. Let's get started. What is UML? UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. We use this language in order to create some diagrams in computer science. For example, we can create a class diagram. A class diagram is also called a UML class diagram. This class diagram is a class representation using UML. So using a class diagram, we can specify the name, the attributes, and the methods of a class. Have a look at this example. This is a template for a class diagram. As you can see, first of all, we specify the class name. And after that, we specify the attributes, and then we have a separator, and then we specify the methods of this class. Remember that the attributes and the methods are called members. So in a class diagram, we specify the name of our class and we specify all the information about its members. Let's start with the attributes, for example. In order to represent an attribute, we should specify its visibility. So is the attribute public, private, or protected, all right? After that, we have the name of the attribute. And then we put a colon, and after that, we put the type of the attribute. When we finish all the attributes, we will put a separator, and then we will specify all the methods. So similarly, we will specify the visibility of the method, then the name of the method. And followed by a colon, we will put the return type of the method. Of course, if the method is a constructor, then it doesn't have a return type. Now let's see this example. When we are given a class diagram, we should be able to understand it. So let's see what we have over here. First of all, we have a class that is called circle. In this class, we have two attributes and the three methods, all right? Let's start with the attributes. As we saw from a little bit, first of all, we should specify the visibility. So as you can see, we have a symbol over here and over here. This symbol indicates the visibility. The dash or the minus sign indicates that this attribute is a private attribute. So over here, we have a private attribute that is called radius, and its type is double. We also have another attribute which is also private, and it is called number of objects, and its type is an integer. And as you can see, we underlined this attribute over here. This means that this attribute is a static attribute, all right? Now these are all the attributes. After that, we have a separator, and over here we have the methods. Similarly, we will specify the visibility of the methods. Let's start with this method over here. As you can see, we have a plus symbol. This symbol means that this method is a public method. So the minus indicates that we have a private member, and the plus indicates that we have a public member. So this public method is called circle, and it takes a double as a parameter. And as you can see, we didn't specify a return type. Obviously, this is a constructor because it is called just like the name of the class. And a constructor doesn't have a return type. Now have a look at the parameters. This constructor takes one parameter, right? The type of this parameter is a double. Notice that we don't specify the name of the parameter. So when we want to represent a method, if this method takes any parameters, then we only put the types of the parameters. Suppose that this constructor takes two parameters. The first one is a double and the second one is an integer. So we do the following. First of all, we put double, and after that we put a comma, and then we put integer, all right? Now let's have a look at this method. This is also a public method. It is called get area, and it takes no parameters. And its return type is a double. Now let's see this method over here. It is also a public method. It is called get number of objects, and it takes no parameters. And it returns an integer. And as you can see, we underlined this method. So this means that this method is a static method. So let's make a small summary. We specify the visibility using symbols. We saw how to represent a private and a public visibility. Later on, we will see a protected visibility, all right? After specifying the visibility, we put the name of the member. If the member is a method, we should specify its parameters. And followed by that, we will specify its return type. Now, if the member is an attribute, we will specify its name, and after that, its type. Now, let's have a look at this example. Over here, we have a class that is called employee. Now, let's see the attributes and the methods of this class. First of all, we have a private attribute, it's called name, and it is a string. After that, we have a private attribute, which is called pay rate, and it is a double. And over here, we have a private attribute, which is called employee ID. As you can see, we are using the snake case convention, and it is all in capital letters. This is how we represent constants or final variables in a UML class diagram. So over here, we have a constant, which is an integer. After that, we have a private static attribute, which is called next ID, which is an integer. And it is static because as you can see, we underlined it. Finally, we have a public attribute. This is a constant because it is written in capital letters using snake case convention. And this attribute is a double. And it is also static because we underlined it, all right? 
Now this is it regarding the attributes. Let's see the methods. As you see, we have two public methods with the same name as the class. So these are our constructors. The first constructor takes one parameter only, which is a string. And the second constructor takes two parameters. The first one is a string and the second one is a double. So as we said, we don't specify the names of the parameters. After that, we have a public method, which is called getName, and it returns a string. Obviously, this is the getter for the name attribute. We also have this getter for the employee ID attribute. So it is a public method, it is called getEmployeeID, and it returns an integer. After that, we have a public method, getPayRate, and it returns a double. So this is the getter for the payRate attribute. Now over here, we have a public method that is called changeName, and it takes a string as a parameter, and it returns nothing. So we have void over here. So this method is used to change the value of the name attribute. So this is actually the setter of the name attribute. Of course, we should call it set name. But over here, we are not creating UML diagrams. We are just trying to understand this UML diagram, right? After that, we have a public method, which is called the change pay rate, and it takes a double as a parameter, and it returns nothing. So this method is used to change the value of the pay rate. Finally, we have the getNextID method, which is a public method, and it returns an integer. And it is also a static method. Now you should do a little bit of practice and try to understand more UML diagrams. You can find a lot online, alright? From now on, we will try to represent the classes using UML diagrams, because it is easier and cleaner, alright? And this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.